Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm aware I'm on stage, like the natural lull in the day, and also you've all been here for like several days, so I'll try and keep the energy up. Um, hopefully you've all got some caffeine. I think this is the first time I've ever presented with a cow in the audience, which I love, um, <laughs> which is one of the great things about iGEM, just the enthusiasm and how much passion you bring to this space. So I'm gonna talk about biofutures, so growing, materials and ingredients using biotech and biotechnology. Quickly though, before I do that, I wanted to say a couple of words of what we do at Biofabricate. Um, two things I wanted to really highlight is we have a membership which is really designed, we have a community membership which is designed for people just like you, everyone who's starting out in this space and who wants to connect with like-minded individuals. If you want to share your projects, it's a great place to do that. Really what we do at Biofabricate is we are trying to convene the space of bio-innovators, brands, um, investors, supply chain to help bring uh, biomaterials and bioingredients to market. And we also have an annual summit that we do here in Paris, which is our annual convening of people in the space. And that's an industry event that we run. And quickly, just to say a word about me. Um, I am not a scientist by training. I studied textiles. So the image on the left is what I was used to when I started studying. I thought I was going to have a lovely career making cushions or doing print designs, and it was going to be fabulous. And then I discovered tissue engineering and medical textiles. And further on from that, companies that were working with biology to grow materials. And as a designer who's aware that the things that I design and make have an impact on the planet, I thought that's got to be the way that we do things. So I then transitioned to learning how to tissue engineer, which ended up in a PhD in tissue engineering, which was quite a leap, having not done science since I was at high school. Um, but I think this, what's incredible about this particular space is it's so multidisciplinary, which is really, really where so much innovation comes from. So why should we look to biology? to make our materials and our ingredients. This is some of the implications of the things that we make and put out into the world. There is every, every material and ingredient that we use has a real impact on our planet and its health. And if we talk about the impact on the planet and how many, much, how many resources that we use, if everyone lived like a French citizen, we'd need 2.8 planet Earth's worth of resources a year. Now, I'm aware I'm a, I'm a Brit talking about the French uh, impact on how many planets. If we're all, um, the UK is just the same. I mean, we're, we're exact, almost exactly the same uh, number of planets. If we're American, we'd need 5.1 planets worth of resources to sustain us yearly. So we are living way beyond our planetary boundaries and biology is one of the ways that we could maybe look to do things differently and live within those boundaries and have a more regenerative and sustainable future because up to two-thirds just as an example in garments up to two-thirds of its impact comes from its raw materials so there is a huge potential to change the impact of a product in the materials that you choose and that you use so at Biofabricate, our vision is our material world built with biology. These are all innovations that are working with biotech, biomaterials in their creation. We have things like this is a spider silk-like protein, which this pleating is created by the super contraction that happens when uh, spider silk comes into contact with water. This is a fermented or brewed protein by the company Spiber. Um, the other moving image on the right is an early stage startup who are looking to try and create photosynthetic fibers. So having your clothing be able to photosynthesize while you wear it, for example. So really turning to nature's toolkits right across the board, algae, bacteria and yeast, mycelium, even mammalian cells. Looking at these as the sort of factories of the future, how do we collaborate with nature to make our materials and ingredients. Because we have only discovered 0.001% of all microbial species on Earth, which is nothing. And already, what we've discovered, what they can do, is truly mind-blowing. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys that. 
we have organisms that can produce pigment that are naturally occurring that you can find in places like the soil. Organisms that can grow materials like cement. And even feed on emissions. So could we use biology to, as, a, as the, feed, the food source for the biology or the microorganisms we use, be things like waste gases? So I wanted to, in the spirit of the Being Awards at IDEMS, I thought I'd make some awards for some of the great organisms that some of the innovators in this space are working with, because I think it's great that you guys get shouted out, but I think we also need to celebrate the workhorses of the projects that, we're, that you're all developing. So we've got a carbon connoisseur. I feel like in this room, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this particular organism, so you can all shout out and tell me if I'm wrong. The Clostridium autoethanogeum bacteria. So this is an organism that is being used by the US company Lanzatech. I believe it was discovered in rabbit droppings. What, what they were doing looking for an organism in rabbit droppings, I don't know, but this is where they found it. And this organism feeds on waste gases as its nutrient source, as its feedstock. And they are producing precursor chemicals which can go into things like fuel for jet engines. So this is part of the partnership that they had with Virgin Atlantic where there was a flight that went across, I think, from London to New York and part of the fuel that was in that jet was from Lanzatex technology. If planes aren't your thing, they've done a couple of collections with the uh, fashion brand Zara. So they, the chemical they're producing is a precursor to things like polyester as well. So they can, the, there was a, two dresses collections that the, you could have bought on the high street which were made using Lanzatex uh, materials which were turned into a polyester-like fabric. Or perhaps perfume's more your thing. This is another collaboration, also built on uh, Lanzatex technology, which was a perfume with the brand Gucci. So an incredible platform technology with an organism that is, was found naturally occurring in rabbit droppings, which can feed on waste emissions. I think definitely it required an award. Quite hard work at that one. Color creator. I know there's some great color projects that are just just over there. Uh, so Streptomycelia color is an incredible organism that is producing will produce pigments. So some of the companies I'm going to talk about in this this presentation, understandably, don't share the strain that they work with because that's proprietary knowledge. So I've sort of called that out on the slide where that where that is the case. Obviously, with startups, it's part of their IP. You can make educated guesses, look at papers and their, their patents. But there is a French startup called Pili Bio who are developing an alternative indigo via um, microbial fermentation. Um, and I believe that came of a, out of a BOY Bio project, uh, space called La Paillesse. May also have had something to do with Gem as well. I think that's one of the great things. And it didn't have anything to do with that. Somebody's shaking their head. It didn't. <laughs> Don't... <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to me. Um, another one is our microbial mag magician. So this is the Bacillus um, group of, of bacteria. This is a US startup called Biomason, who have, a again, a naturally occurring microbe that they found, which, was, uh, which can produce calcium carbonate. So it can grow cement, essentially. So cement production is a hugely environmentally, has huge environmental impact. Um, whereas theirs can, they take waste aggregates, so particles from things like the mining industry, and then they use this bacteria to essentially fuse those particles together. To, and they're actually adding to, bio, to deposits of limestone. So rather than being a subtractive process, it is actually an additive process. If they were to make a block the same size um, and shape as a concrete block, they can make it multiple times stronger than concrete, should they have the desire to. And this image is part of a project that they are doing with, I think it's the uh, United States of Defense. And this is a uh, marine sort of situation where they are using the material to re sort of shore up 
sea defences. So actually self-repairing materials that can get stronger underwater and help protect things like sea defences. They also produce things for interiors. So their first product that they're working on is uh, things like tiles and pavers. This is actually an, ins uh, an installation of their tiles that they produced, which went into Dropbox's HQ. It's been there since 2015 and it's still going strong. So this is a very early collaboration that the company started. But ultimately, going after things like ready-mixed concrete has a huge potential for impact because you think about everything in our built environment and just how much we could uh, impact emissions if we moved away from concrete. Um, cellulose creator. I think we've had quite a few bacterial cellulose projects um, of those seen throughout the day. You're probably mostly familiar with it as a health drink, if you haven't seen it, so kombucha. Um, this is a great little, it's got a, I think it's 21% SCOBY in there. Um, but it's mostly known for that. But the cellulose this particular bacteria um, produces is a real focus for a range of startups who are developing uh, different products. An example of that is Mexican startup Polybion. So this is a recent collaboration with the, German, uh, the Danish fashion brand called Gani. So they just um, showed their first ever collection at Paris Fashion Week. And this, um, this skirt and this uh, sort of zip-up vest are both made, making, made via their alternative leather material. This is 100% cellulose, which has been fermented and then treated very much like a, um, a leather. They've also done jackets, and bags with the brand, um, and they're really scaling up to so looking at local production, so things like waste uh, sugar from sort of uh, fruit uh, drinks production. How can you take that as a waste stream feedstock into your organism to produce you this, uh, this leather alternative? This one is actually specifically called out. So this is a really interesting project which was done through UK startup Modern Synthesis and the Ellis Lab at Imperial College. So this was um, a cellulose that was also dyed during its creation process because there was the organism was, was expressing melanin as well. So the, where it gets really interesting is whether you can build in different functionality and processes into one step. So imagine if you can ferment the ingredient you're looking for, whether it's a protein or a cellulose, but also diet at the same time. There are some companies that are actually looking at how do you engineer, rather than go working with existing organisms that produce a certain uh, uh, thing like cellulose or a particular naturally occurring protein. Some, like Selena materials in the UK, are using AI and machine learning to develop completely novel proteins. So that even is how do you think about perhaps the end of life of your material that you could build that into the protein structure like what it happens at the end of life does it biodegrade does it compost how does that that function so thinking beyond just one step what is it that biology does that we can't do how can we remove steps in a process how can we think about changing the way we make things because the way we've made our clothes and our products has been the same for a very long time really we should be leaning into the power of what biology can offer that nothing else has that capacity to do so. Um, of course, the microbial workhorse of E. coli. Um, <laughs> so this is a proprietary strain that the um, Japanese company Spiber, um, where they, have me they started trying to produce and brew spider silk protein. They did it so well that actually they discovered when this jacket was first created, uh, quite, quite a few years ago, they discovered that it w shrank quite a bit when exposed to water, which is what spider webs do. The super contraction of spider webs is great because it stops them breaking when they get wet. It's not ideal for your ski jacket. You're skiing down the slopes and all of a sudden you're like this because it's shrunk. So <laughs> they had to go back to the drawing board and further develop and really learn what it was that their protein, what it did, how it behaved. So it, now the, what they're producing is referential to spider silk, but it is its own thing. They have partnerships with, say, the likes of North Face Japan, the fashion brand Sakai, but they've just launched a scarf with Burberry. So they are leaning into both the, the 
silk know-how that exists in Japan and also the sort of cutting edge science that they're doing to develop first and foremost fibers and, fabric, um, and yarns for textiles, but they're also looking at leather alternatives, um, applications for personal care. So anywhere where you might use a protein, they're uh, looking to, to do that with theirs. And I wanted to bring this one up, talking about the, the importance of things like iGEM. Some of you might be aware of this project. So this was back in 2006, the MIT team, which I think is a genius name for a project. OD Coli, as talking about a, a fragrance. <laughs> there was, um, they developed an E. coli that would produce the, uh, the scent of banana, and there was another plant, which the name is escaping me at the moment. Um, but yeah, a great name, a great project, really well um, uh, executed. And of course, many of the team went on to found Ginkgo Bioworks, which I'm sure many, many, all of you have heard of. So talking about where iGEM plays such a critical role in sort of developing the next generation of companies and innovations for applications across the board. But that has been taken on by other companies, so um, Arkea is actually a company that span out of Ginkgo Bioworks through um, a, an, an entrepreneur in residence, Jasmina Aganovich, who has worked previously at a place like Mother Dirt and then founded Arkea. So they have a range of different applications they're developing through fermentation-based technology. This is a direct-to-consumer perfume brand that they developed called Future Society. They looked at six extinct plants. They went to the Harvard um, archive where they have specimens of these plants. They took tiny, minute samples from those plants and then looked for the scent encoding portions of, that, of its sequence and then expressed those through their microbial uh, technology. So they are, these scents are all based on six extinct flowers. So this is really where biology becomes magical. So when you look at beauty and personal care, people are looking at biotech because it allows you to maybe source things which are difficult to source or maybe ethically problematic. Squalene is a great example of that. Um, but where it gets really exciting is where it goes beyond what we can actually um, find in nature or even source. Thinking about what, again, what does biology enable that we can't do in any other way? So I wanted to sort of leave you with this provocation. I think we've already seen so many of it, so much of it through this jamboree, but what is your vision for a future world built with biology? When we look at the incredible variety and richness of what, of what nature can already produce, that it can do at scale with amazing precision um, at usually room temperatures and circular systems, Let's look at what biology enables us to do and think and dream about what it can enable for our future materials and products. Um, if, bit of a plug, but if you did want to submit any of your projects to our community showcase, it's a great place where anyone can, you can say, look, ask for what you're looking for, whether it's advice, whether you want to continue the project, whether you're looking for co-founders, if you're looking for advisors, funding, or whether you just want to share your project with a wider community. So this is a really great place to, to do that. We really want to encourage everyone and to sort of support this community to, to grow. Um, if you didn't get it or it's not working for anybody, come and see me afterwards. I've got a bunch of, of, of cards with the QR code on it. Um, but it's really a place for, in our membership, for everyone to, to showcase their work, to find community and to support one another for, as you, the sort of next generation of innovators. Thank you so much for listening to me. This is just quick, uh, that one's just for our website. So if you wanted to look more what we, about what we do, um, but thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all your hard work because it's incredible to see so many projects and I can't wait to see where they all go next. So thank you.